Welcome to Web Design with Pages. I just, as a preface, want to say this is the first time I've done a code along, so I might go too fast. And please just like put your hand up or interrupt or ask me to explain something more as well if I need to. Um, so in this lesson, uh, we'll cover uh, what, could, what GitHub pages are, um, why you might want to use them, how to create one. There's two ways we'll do online, and then we'll do um, locally on your computer, and then just some basics of working with Jekyll. I'll start, it might be good if everyone just like pulls this up, the lesson overview from the U of T coders page under lesson content, so like from here. Um, and then was everyone able to, does everyone have a GitHub account? Uh, maybe if you don't, could you raise your hand? And does everyone have Git on their computer? Okay, and then what about Jekyll? Was everyone able to get that running and installed on their computer? Right. Windows. Windows. Okay. Does anyone else is anyone else using Windows? I just want to also instruct So maybe like when we get to that stage, it's sort of like in the last third. Uh, we can like stop, and there's a way that you can sort of still do part of it without having Jekyll working, but. Um, hopefully, we can figure it out, and maybe we could sit together and like the Windows people could like peer troubleshoot because I have no idea how that would work. <laughs> awesome. Uh, okay, so why uh, and what are GitHub pages? Um, they're a feature on GitHub that allows you to host static websites or individuals, uh, projects, or organizations um, from a repository. Um, so maybe just first, like for terminology, what's static versus dynamic? Uh, dynamic websites are ones where the pages are generated in real time each time you visit it. Uh, some examples of this are like, like popular content management systems or Drupal, and those are written in PHP. Uh, a static one, on the other hand, is one that pages are where they're converted into just an HTML page, um, or they're written directly that way. So the internet used to be static web pages. Uh, and it now increasingly has all these alternatives to do that again, but uh, a lot of dynamic pages are kind of like on websites that you're interacting with. Um, so does this mean that uh, because it's static, it's not very interactive? No, because we live in a world with JavaScript and HTML5. Uh, and I, I had a really good example. I was listening to a talk, and this um, person mentioned like what I thought was the best example of a dynamic or an interactive static web page. So I'm going to try and pull it up, but uh, I'm sort of NeoCities. Has anyone heard of NeoCities? Uh, uh, so, if, did anyone ever have a GeoCities website? Okay. Did they make their own? So, GeoCities was like in, back in the 90s a popular way for people to make their own web. Uh, and then this um, guy, Kyle Drake, rebooted it kind of uh, as NeoCities. And he was talking about like the rise of like everyone making their own websites again and like a renaissance and everyone having their own website. And Oh, is it not going to load? And this was his example of a static interactive website. And it is not loading for me. Oh, no. We'll try one. Yes, OK. <laughs> so it's the My Little Pony episode guide. And you can do things like select like arcs or themes that you're interested in, or like characters. So you say, I want to only watch ones with Applejack. I don't even know who Applejack is. I've never watched an episode. Um, but like all of this part, so like setting filters and being able to reload and change content is totally um, interactive, but this is being served to you as a static website. So this is not a website that's being generated as you visit it. The person wrote all the content and then put it up, and that's what you're coming and visiting. Okay, sorry, interlude aside. I found that after I wrote the lesson content. I was like, I must somehow fit this in. <laughs> um, so maybe what are some reasons that people are interested in using GitHub pages? Like why were anyone, why did anyone who came here uh, want to learn about GitHub pages? Yeah. Um, well, I said your website is in the business manual, yeah. Okay, that's a really good reason. <laughs> uh, I don't have Yeah. I think that it's practical for if I have a project to, especially if I'm using what we can use, if we can use what I can probably do now. Yeah, awesome. That's another good one. 
Um, so I put a couple that were like the reasons I was interested in it. Uh, it's free. That's nice. Um, I think static sites in some ways are more secure, having um, run like a man the person who has to manage and update all the plugins on a WordPress site and like keep remembering to log in and like then all of a sudden the site gets like hacked and then you're supposed to like fix it is terrifying. Uh, and I think there's less potential for that to happen on a static site, uh, but it could still happen, I guess. Uh, and then um, you can manage all the content for your projects in one place, which to me is so great. Just one less place to remember to have to go. Um, and so I also pulled up some examples here. I won't really go into all of them, but uh, I put both the URL to the page and also to the repo. Um, so you can see what it looks like and then what the repository is as well. Maybe just one that uh, is another like interactive one, which I spent far too much time on, is the game 2048. This is a GitHub page. So if you ever want to waste time on 2048, know that you're doing it on a GitHub page. And then here's the uh, repository for it. Anyway, OK. So um, maybe actually moving on to making our own. Uh, I just put up this table of some of the naming conventions, uh, which also can help you like recognize when you see a GitHub page. Um, there's a few different types. So you can have it as a user. Um, and then you can see that you would have it as username.github.io. So whatever your account name is on GitHub would be um, how you go to the page. Um, you can have an organization page. Uh, which is similar to a user, but like if you, as a user, are part of a group with a bunch of other people, you have an organization name, and then that could have its own web page. Uh, and then the last way is to have a project page. And so that's where you have um, a project that is not the same name as your username, and then that's where you're visiting the web page from. Um, so let's make a GitHub page. Uh, GitHub helpfully has uh, an online editor. <laughs> so we should do it that way first. Uh, so if you want to go to GitHub, um, and you can just go to github.com slash new to be already prompted to make a new repository, um, we're going to make one. So I'm going to call it test website. Uh, I'm bad at writing descriptions, but I will say this is a test website. And then um, you can choose, I don't know if anyone else, like if you are a student, you can get the free education pack for GitHub, so you can actually make the private repositories if you want. Um, and that's really lovely, but otherwise it's just a public one. <laughs> and you can initialize it with a readme, which maybe is good, and you can add a get ignore, but I'm just gonna create a repository. Okay, so I have a test website repository, and um, we can go to settings and use the automatic page generator. Wow, it's a little bit slow. OK, cool. So um, down sort of three quarters of the way, there's the automatic page generator. You can just go launch. Um, and it takes you to a screen uh, where you just can fill in some initial details and uh, you're ready to go. So if you don't have any content, um, but you like know that you want a web page, this is maybe not the best way to start. Like I would maybe only go to the stage when you know you want to write something, <laughs> but um, we can give it a name. Maybe I'll just get rid of that um, dash. I really like them. I don't know why. Um, uh, so I can go, oh no, no worries. I can just go back. So are you on the settings tab in the repository that we made? And then just scrolling down, it's like two thirds also this time, all oh, the way down. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, you can just edit the name, maybe give it a better tagline than my terrible one. Um, and then down here, they have sort of, uh, it's a markdown editor, but they give you a lot of, um, I don't know, is this like a hybrid, like sort of like a hybrid uh, markdown, but also they'll like put the tags in for you. So if you like don't exactly know how to use uh, markdown or are not as familiar with it and want to play around with the tags, they give you that top part so you can um, see what each part does. Um, yeah, and then in the body, this is what's going to be the content on your website. 
So they give you some filler content, and I'm lazy, so I'm going to use this. <laughs> and then we can go back and make a change later. So continue to layouts at the bottom. Uh, and then they also like helpfully give you a bunch of themes. I am really feeling architect right now. I don't know about anyone else. It's kind of hard to see on here, but it's got some nice like good grid in the background. And then it shows you, so you can preview. Um, if you want to go back, you can. Um, I thought you could go back by. I think yeah. Okay, sorry. You click edit, and then it should send you back. So you can actually move back and forth between checking your content and how it's going to look. Uh, I'm going to publish it right away though, and just take a leap. Okay. So it's been created, and then at the top it tells you uh, how to get there. So let's check it out. We have a website. Does everyone else have a website? Uh -huh. um, so when, right when, after you make it, at the top it tells you um, the URL. But also, if you made it uh, and the repo name is not your name, it's a private page. So the format for those are, um, oh, sorry, mine looks weird because I actually have a website with a custom domain name. I apologize for that. But I could. Like it actually goes as, yeah. So it's like my uh, GitHub name is DC Walk, and dot GitHub IO is in everyone, and then your repo name after. So was everyone able to go and visit their website? Any questions? Okay, I'm going to move on, but please stop me if you want to re go over any step. So um, now we could just maybe look at um, so we could look at the branches and the commit history and just kind of see what's going on in the background. So if we go back to our uh, repository, um, we'll see that there's just one um, one commit on master, but that there's also another branch. Um, so who is everyone here familiar with branches in Git? No? OK. <laughs> um, there is a great uh, UFT coders lesson on it that's filmed um, that Luke did <laughs> from last week. So I would totally suggest checking that out. Um, I think what I'll say now, and hopefully this makes sense, but please <laughs> stop, is that um, you can, with uh, GitHub, you don't have to have all of, uh, if you want to work on a change or you want to do something that's not going to affect all of your content at once, you can have it on a separate branch. That's not a great example. But um, so for most of the websites, you are actually just going to do it all in the same place because the repository is only used for a website, and then it would be on your master branch. But for project pages, they were kind of designed um, expecting that people actually had a project that then they wanted a web page for. And so not only do you have your project content in that, like, that repository, but you also want to have your website content. And so that's why um, for project pages, you would go and use the GitHub pages branch to actually um, have a web page that people can access. And then you would have all of your like, project content in the main uh, master branch. So that's probably not a great explanation because it's not like an intro to branches, but that's kind of the rationale behind why you're using a second branch if you have a project uh, uh, GitHub page versus if you have like a username one and it's an, or an organization one, it's in master. Um, yeah, so if we go to GitHub pages, we can see there is a commit and it shows that we created it uh, via GitHub. Um, so if we want to go back as we have our, our website, and then we've decided that we actually want to change something. Um, we can go do that now. What did you call your repository? You, oh, you don't have a master. Huh. Yeah. Oh, it's because I put a readme in. Yeah. Sorry. Um, and it's like you don't need to have a master in there, but if you like say that was a your actual repository that you were working in for a project, you would have all that content in master, and then have all of your website stuff on the GitHub pages branch. Um, so let's go back and make a change and then see what it looks like. 
Um, and there's a nice, oops, sorry. Um, you actually just have to go back and use the automatic page generator if you want to use the same interface to make a change online. Um, so from here, let's say I know I don't want any of that stuff because it wasn't actually my stuff anyway. And just this is my first. This is a really long header. And let's put a link in. Right now. Um, and so if you know the markdown syntax, obviously you can just write it. Um, but if you would like to use some of the helpful tools from GitHub, you can <laughs> use those as well. Um, what's this called? Friendship is magic. Oh, I didn't spell that right. And uh, there's a nice feature uh, with GitHub pages, and especially if it's a project page, um, that they helpfully tell you about, um, where you can at mention GitHub usernames. Um, and you don't actually have to do all the work of like putting a link in, um, as long as you're serving it on GitHub. If you're serving it elsewhere, that won't get recognized. So I. Maybe we'll say you can check out my stuff. Uh, yeah, okay, so you have to kind of go through the same process again. And let's go with a different theme this time. And we will publish it. Okay, so you should just be able to reload the web page um, URL and have your updated one. And so on here, I have a link to the best website on the internet. And we can go and check out my GitHub profile. Uh, so that's like, I would say, super easy and a really quick way if you just want to throw something up and you have to do it uh, like, in the next couple hours sort of thing to get uh, a website up online, especially for like a project that you have. Um, I think uh, we can go and check out and see what happened uh, once we made that change. So if you look at the commit, um, if you see it also, it look, the message looks the same. And if you want to see what you changed in between it, it, it does cover some of it, but it's a little bit like, I don't know, sometimes I find it a little confusing and it like, because I chose a different theme, it like changed those sections. Um, anyway, so I think sometimes I've had trouble if you choose the same theme, like it looks like it picks it all up again. So it doesn't always track your changes in the easiest way, um, but it's like super quick. I think that's the main benefit. Uh, so yeah, I think uh, that's one way and it's a really good way. Uh, but if you want a little bit more control, uh, it's probably easier to work with it locally. Um, and so we can move on to that. And that does require Jekyll, but we can start with some of the Git stuff as well. Is everyone cool to move on? Or does anyone have any questions about this part? Awesome. OK, so uh, we can start and just check if we actually have everything on our computer. Is that? Okay, for, yeah. Can everyone see that? Should it be bigger? It's okay. Okay, so um, we just want to make sure that we have Git. And I didn't spell it right. Cool, I do, yes. <laughs> and then also for Jekyll. Okay, so does everyone have, when, if they see what version of Jekyll they have, are they getting something? Cool. And so people who are on Windows, 
Um, you said you have it working on your computer? Okay. Um, do you want to sit, maybe could we have the Windows people relocate? Would that be okay right now? That might be like a good... Okay. So similarly, uh, similar to what we did um, online, I'm going to have us make a project page repository um, on Google. Uh, if you wanted to do it for your um, yourself and you want it to be like just a personal page, it has to be exactly the repository name has to be um, your GitHub name or GitHub account. So for me, the dcwalk.github.io. Um, but for this one, because it's a project, we can just give it any name we want. Um, so yeah, let's make a repository. <clears throat> and then we can go into it. And um, actually, sorry, let's do this this way. Um, yeah, okay. So we're going to uh, start and just do a bit of an intro into Jekyll. So Jekyll is um, a package that's, Jekyll's written in Ruby, and so you probably downloaded a Ruby gem, which is a package in Ruby, um, to have an executable that's on your command line. Uh, so when you type Jekyll version, you're just checking which version it is. Um, and what Jekyll is, is a static page generator, and so it works with a few uh, different pieces to sort of produce static pages that are served as HTML. Um, and so we're going to just walk through the first few commands and then we'll kind of like take a look at um, what the different components are and how that is the page. Um, so there are very few <laughs> commands uh, to start with. Um, so if we are going to make a new project, we just go new. Um, and then we can call it first website. I made it the, so I actually made the Git repository first. You don't have to. I don't know why I like doing that, but I do. Uh, you could just go into the repository and make it after. Um, so I would just go Jekyll new and then make the same folder name that you did if you already initialized a Git repository. If you didn't, you can just type any old name for your project, but it's going to make a new folder that you're going to have to uh, go into. Okay. Um, and are people here relatively familiar with com the command line and like bash commands? Sort of? Okay. <laughs> um, so we're going to go into this repository. Does anyone know what the command for that is? Yeah. So, and we can use tab completion, which is my favorite thing in the world. So you just type the first letter or first couple letters and press tab. Cool. Um, and. Uh, I like to sort of see what's going on, and so list files ls and throw far too many slides on there. Um, okay, and so this is what's going on in a repository, uh, a Jekyll, uh, Jekyll project as soon as you start it. Um, and so the new command actually not only like tells, uh, like, like sets up the folder structure, um, like our folder for it, it actually puts all of the uh, other different files we need to start working and having a project up and running right away, which is very helpful. Um, and so the next command is uh, serve. So we're going to just like check out uh, what's going on in this project. So we can just press Jekyll serve. Um, and a lot of stuff comes up. And the most important thing at the bottom is here the server address. So we just want to copy paste that or type it. Uh, I'm lazy. And then let's check it out in the browser. 
Okay. So we have another website. We have so many websites. Can you do that? Sure. So I didn't do anything except type serve. Here. So like we can Judy in. So like I'm in the I'm in the folder for my Jekyll project. And I checked and it's like got all the bits that make it look like a Jekyll project. And then all I type is Jekyll serve. That's all I type. So that it tells Jekyll that it um, should work with all the files in this folder and like generate a web page product. And so it, it makes skeleton content when you make a new project. So um, like, let me do this otherwise. Yeah, that's their like default template stuff. So if I, let's make a new folder just to see what's going on in there. And then, so we'll go into that. Oops. And then let's try Jekyll serve and see what happens. I've actually never done this. Look, okay, sweet. So it's also telling me that I could go and check out this like server address, but it's tell it's giving me a couple warnings saying that there wasn't a configuration file, which seems probably really important. Um, so it's the same address, and that's because I stopped serving before. And so I can just go and refresh it, and there's nothing there. So it's tried to treat this like it's a Jekyll site, and there's enough content to give me a website, but there isn't. That's why. You you have to do because it'll give it the skeleton content so you have everything to work with. So, um, so let's just get out of there because we don't need to test it. <laughs> Oops. Okay, so back in here. What? Locally. Actually, so it, yeah, it's a local server, but it's not on the internet. Um, so part of what Jekyll has is like not only. Um, like it sort of sets up like a base template and then um, ha has like a list of instructions from how to convert that into a static website. It also has like a local web server. So you can like see how um, the changes you make are uh, gonna look. Um, so it is on a web server, but it's a local one. It's not on the internet, just on your computer. Um, okay, so does everyone have uh, like a new Jekyll project, and can they visit it in a browser? <laughs> okay. What does it say? Okay, so liquid. Can you? Are you on a new project? Yeah, I think so. So I type liquid new. Uh huh. So I did that. Um, and then sir. And then I get the same configuration. I don't know. Are you in this? The, did you change, move into the folder that you made the new project? It's called Yeah, whatever you made it. Okay. So we have uh, a skeleton uh, website, but we don't have any of our content in it. Um, and we can make a change and then see how that looks. So uh, does everyone have a text editor that they like? Awesome. Um, you will need to use this now. Um, so I use Atom, which works. Um, and I'm just going to go to the folder where I um, put my new project. And I'm going to open, actually, just open the index.html, because that sounds like a pretty standard <laughs> website uh, file name. And it, it is like every website has an index.html. Um, so there's a lot of different files going on in here, and we'll look at them in one sec. But first, just to see um, how the content is generated, uh, let's make a change and then see if we can get it to change in the browser. So. Um, in the does everyone have like index HTML opened in a text editor? Awesome, um, and we can see that on here. 
uh, there actually isn't things like the the title, awesome title. Um, there's a there's some content, um, but let's add something just to see if we can make it show up. So, um, and it says posts. Um, we're gonna add like a subheading, so similar to like how Markdown works with hashes, and then there's like one for heading one, and then there's two for two, um, and HTML h1 through I think like h6 are standardly defined. Um, so we'll have a subheading and we'll call it post heading. Uh, and then we'll save it. What? Oh, yes, thank you. And um, we can go back here. And so when you make any change, uh, if you've left the serve, like if you haven't killed the serve command and it's running in your terminal, um, you should see these like messages at the bottom saying it's regenerating. Um, and if not, you can just type Jekyll serve again and it'll regenerate your web page. Uh, and so then let's refresh it in the browser. And look, we have a subheading. Was everyone able to make a change in the index file and see it show up? Maybe. I see some nodding heads, this is good. Okay, I'm gonna, um, we can go back now and maybe just look a little bit at all of the different um, files that are in the folder and sort of unpack what they all do. Um, and so I can just stop serving. And um, let's see what we have. Uh, and the most important one, um, and we can open it up in the text editor as well, is the config dot YML, which is YAML. Um, so again, if you want to open it in your text editor, uh, we can see what we have. So they helpfully give you a really nice message. Um, so this config file is meant for settings that affect your whole blog. Um, and here now we can see the title of the blog, and we see our email, and we see a description. Um, and those weren't in the HTML file before. So uh, some of where you get to make the changes in content uh, in Jekyll are a little bit all over the place. And part of that is because it's, a, it's not just for generating like um, pretty basic web pages. You can generate blogs from it or like event calendars. And so there can be a lot of different pieces of content. They sort of separate them out and then bring them together. Um, but the config file being one of the most important ones and where some of the basic uh, information about your site is set up. So um, does everyone want to maybe change the title to a title that is reflective of what they want their website to be? didn't work. Yeah, so, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, for um, the config file, um, it, won't, it won't regenerate and catch those changes until you go all the way back and go Jekyll serve again. Okay, so I was able to get those to change. And you notice that I just put my email address in there, but then when I go to the website, it actually works as a like a clickable a mail to link. Mm -hmm. um, so Jekyll handles some of that, taking like takes care of some of that stuff for you. If you put your Twitter username and Git GitHub username there, it would also automatically link it for you. So there's like parts of um, like where Jekyll kind of does a bit of work for you, which is nice. So you're not actually like writing hand coding everything in HTML. Okay, so now that we've kind of seen the two places, like the two types of ways you can make a change, um, let's just cover what's going on in 
um, this repository and then the different types of uh, files that Jekyll has. Um, so I was going to just show this. Oops. So everyone can see what's in the file. And then actually, I think that this is the best. Yeah, the Jekyll docs actually do a really good job of describing all of the different parts. So um, we've already touched the config file. It stores configuration data. They have a bunch of other folders that have an underscore in front, and we can see the files that are in them. Um, and so layouts are like templates that you have for different types of pages. And you can see there's one that says page and post and default. Default is like a base small one. Um, page is like if you want to stack, like a, if you have like an about page. Um, posts are because a lot of people use Jekyll for like a blog. And so if you want to have like a blog or an event, you may have like a separate layout to show you that. Um, includes are like little mini snippets of like code, mostly HTML. That, um, so if you want to have the same thing show up multiple times on your website, just to save you having to retype it, um, you can sort of set, make it once. It's like dry, don't repeat yourself. You can make it once and then bring it into each page as you need. Um, this is where the, a lot of the styling happens. Um, I'm not like much of a SAS person, so we can talk about CSS if you really want to. <laughs> but suffice to say that I kind of just do a bit of a mock about there. <laughs> um, and then the site is actually um, a static version of your site that gets generated when you go check on serve. Uh, you don't really need this, um, except if you're going to host it somewhere yourself. Um, if you're working with GitHub pages, because they also use Jekyll on their end, um, they take care of like many Jekyll things. Um, and then at the bottom, we have like the index HTML. Uh, we had another CSS page, so SAS um, gets compiled down into CSS. And then we have another like a markdown page called About. So let's open that one and see what's in there. <laughs> Oh, it's tree. Yeah, which I love. And it has like like a million different flags, and I never know what any of them do. But there's ones you can do that like are like so cool. So yeah, just tree. The base tree does that. Oh, sorry. That's me like trying to stack too many things. This is my text editor, but I use Adam, and so Adam kind of like is a text editor that tries to be a little bit of an IDE. So they like allow you to put like a folder of paths thing in there. And also because it's really made for people who work with like version control stuff, if you have um, like a, a, a repo in there, like a, like a git control repo, it shows up and it shows you which changes have been committed and stuff. But yeah, it's just a text editor. Um, I think like text wrangler kind of has like the sidebar with the folder path. It's been so long since yeah, I've used it. Okay, so um, we were going to just check out what we have in the about file. Um, and I was just going to, well, we can open it in my text editor. Let's do that. So if we go to about, uh, we can see that it looks a lot different than the index page. And we can see now that at the top of the page there is um, these three dashes. Um, and that's um, called front matter. And so on the about page, there's a bit more. And so there's a layout, and that tells it where in layout. So I can do this. It tells it which layout to use. There's a title, so that would be the title for the page. And then there's a link for it. Um, so this is saying there's a page called about, and the permalink is slash about. So just to check that it's there, we could go back to our site, um, which I think I'm not actually serving. And then click on about. And so if we change something, so in here, why don't we just change it to about this, because I am not there. And then this part is not, uh, is not written in HTML. It's written just in Markdown. Um, and so in here, we see like a link, like uh, 
how you would do a link in Markdown, not HTML. Um, but you can also throw HTML content in these pages if you want, and it'll render similar to like how Markdown will work with HTML. Um, and the other thing in here which is important to note that we haven't seen before, or maybe I just didn't point it out so we didn't look at it, <laughs> is these includes. And this is a liquid tag. So when you got that error that was saying there was like a liquid template, um, it was talking about, I think, not being able to see these. So um, if it's like um, in a curly brace and then a percentage, there, it's a liquid tag. And that's how it like pulls in other parts that are spread around. So you notice it says include. And then we also have the folder that started with includes. And if we look in what's in that folder, we can find the piece that it's saying it's including. So it's saying include icon GitHub HTML. So we can go and click on it in there. And then there it is. So it's just like a snippet of code. Let me actually wrap this. And some of them are a little more substantial. And um, that's just like here, like the head. That has the sort of top part of the website that's repeated at every page. Um, so I think there's like a lot, there's a lot to kind of unpack in <laughs> what you can do with Jekyll. Um, and I think the docs are really great and I use them all the time. So I would put a strong plug in for going and using <laughs> their documentation because I think um, it's pretty straightforward and they do a really good job of trying to explain each component and what it does. And they're kind of bringing together a lot of different um, Technology, like, or technology is kind of the wrong word. And sometimes I find that hard to work with. So it's like they're using liquid tags, they're using HTML, they're like using Markdown, they're using SAS. Like it's not just CSS. They, like so, they do a good job of like pointing you out to all the resources if you need to know them too. Um, uh, or uh, you could kind of I think through here as well, just get enough. Um, yeah. Okay. So then I guess just as a last step, I thought we could. Uh, push the test website live, pretending we have done a lot of editing and have like a really cool website, um, and then check it out on GitHub. So, back in our repository, um, you don't need to serve it anymore. Um, and we should just check out, uh, so if anyone hasn't initialized a Git repository, do so now, so you can type Git in it. But I already did. So I just want to see what's going on. Um, and it's showing me that, ooh, sorry, this is a bit small. It's showing me um, that I haven't <laughs> done anything <laughs> and I'm on the branch master. So um, in here too, it actually has a git ignore, which is nice. Um, so uh, if we just want to see what's going on in the git ignore, because I think I made a mention earlier that you don't actually need the site to go live, and even though we have one, so here, even when I look at the files that are in the folder, I see an underscore site folder, like this one with the slash down here. This, that red is like so hard to see on here, I apologize. Um, but up here it's not showing, so um, I guess we just want to see why that's the case. Um, so we can look at our git ignore. Uh, and there's three files in it, and these are three files that GitHub uh, has said, we don't need from you, Jekyll. So underscore site, um, the SAS, like the style cache, and then a dot, a dot file for that, and then another dot file for like um, metadata associated with Jekyll. Um, does everyone have, so everyone's in their folder. Has everyone um, initialized a Git, a Git repository in that folder? So just typed Git init. And then afterwards, type git status and see that they have untracked files. Maybe. OK. Um, so because this one is not a user um, page, it's just a project page, because I called it first website, and I already have a user website. <laughs> um, we need to put it on the GitHub page uh, branch. We can't put it on master. And if you remember, I had that um, naming conventions table up here. So 
uh, it says if it's a project name, it has to be, or if it's a project page, it has to be on GitHub pages. Branch called GitHub pages before we put any of our changes onto it. The GH pages. And we can add all of our files. And then we can commit them. So we go git add, and if you put the dot, it'll add everything. Um, I like doing a checkout and then making a new branch, like with the B flag. So git checkout, then dash B, I don't know how to say that, hyphen. Uh, then GitHub pages. Um, first. OK. So was it everyone? Is everyone on? Uh, okay. Do people have? Do people make a new branch? Um, so we can uh, check if we have a branch. Oh. Oh right, because I only have one, right? Okay, so if people type git status, what are they seeing? Seeing you get commit. And we can put a message in it. Okay. So have people committed their files? Um, okay, so if have you created if you want to have the branch called GitHub pages, so we would go get checkout. And then B, like dash B, hyphen B. Uh, and then GH pages, GH dash pages. And the name uh, matters. This has to be exact. This is awesome. the title has, or the name of the branch. And then after that, we want to add all of the files. So we can go git add and then just a dot to add everything that's in the directory. And after that, we can go git status again and just make sure that everything's been added. I've committed it already, so it says I'm working on a clean directory. And then we want to commit it, and you have to put a message, which you also so we go git commit m, and then we add a message in there. So once we've done this, um, we can just make the repository on the website, and then we can push it to that. So if we go to GitHub, Has everyone, or have most people, committed their changes? So we can go to GitHub. So in our browser, go to GitHub, and we want to make a repository. Uh, we have to make a new repository to send these changes to. And that repository has to have the same name as what you've called your folder. See ya. Um, so I called mine first website. And then we just create a repository again.
And if everyone has made a new repository, um, you can just copy, you need the address of it, so we can just copy it. And this first quick setup. And you want to go back to the terminal. And we're going to add it so we can go get remote add and origin. And then we want to put the address so I can just paste in what I copied. And then we just want to send our changes. So we can go get push. And we have to let, um, because we haven't sent anything to this repository before, we have to set the location we're sending it to. So we go set upstream. And then we choose the branch. Uh, I, if it's not master, I think you do. I could, wait, let me just not do that. And let's try. <laughs> I think it took. Yeah. So there's no upstream branch. Oh. That's probably why I never used upstream. So, so the first command, this git origin, is saying this is where I want to send you, and that's the address that GitHub told us when we made it. Repository, and we got the the address. Oh, it's taking a long time. I feel like there's something on the something about the. Internet. Oh yeah, see it says you there. Yeah. I've never used you before. Yeah, see, I like my like, double dashes. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know why. That's a lot of technical mm -hmm. All I was saying the uh, message from it also just says set up screen doesn't Yeah. I I guess I've just always done it that way because that's what I saw as the message. I was like, oh I'm not doing something. Oops. Um, yeah, it's sort of not connecting. I don't know why. We could see if it's in here. Nope. Maybe. Okay, well, at this point, it should go up, <laughs> but we'll wait a second. And that was that was basically it. I was going to go, okay, now we have this one, and we've done it online, too. Maybe I can just force it. Let's try it. Does this work? Uh, hmm. 
SSH? There, it went. Okay, cool. <laughs> okay, so we should be able to see it now. Probably, I mean, I guess it was just another shot. Okay, cool. And so now we see the content if we refresh the repository. Uh, and I've, apparently I've been very unhelpful. There is no read me, I'm sorry. Uh, and we should be able to go and see it. So uh, we're on, just make sure that it's on a GitHub pages branch. Um, and we called it first website. So um, we can just go, it would be my username, so dcwalk.github.io first website. Weird. I got some really oh. interesting. <laughs> it might be my browser. I think it's What do you mean? When you serve it, do you get it? Look, does it look like this too? Yeah, like oh, really? Yeah. And what in there? Oh, you write the URL. Yeah. So you have to change this to um, where it's going to be on your website. Thank you. So it would be deswap. Um, actually, can't you just put the? I think you can just do the relative path. Uh, Okay, so let's try it this way and then see. So I'm just trying to remember. I could check on this one anyway. So when in doubt, I will check how, oops, how I've done it before. Well, to see my the actual repository for mine, I think that would. Be. What? Well, we can try back then here. Hmm. Yeah, you're on the Okay. Let's see what this one is. Yeah, okay, so I think it's just the slash, right? So yeah, it should yeah, just be first website. Thank you, yay. So um, in the config file, what we added was these two lines. So the base URL and URL. And so the base URL is the name of the repository. And then the URL um, 
is you include the protocol, so HTTP, and then you would put um, the first half, I guess, of the address. So your name, your GitHub name, and then followed by github.io. And then when we reload it, sorry, I can close that. And this one, sorry, once again, shows the other thing. So github.io and first website, it loads. Um, okay, so that's putting a website online locally uh, as opposed to using the online <laughs> editor. Um, and the one thing that I didn't know how much time we would have, um, that, but I threw some extra links on there, is a lot of times you probably aren't going to start um, from scratch and build up your whole website because there's a lot of work that goes into making, um, uh, I guess, sort of editing the style and making it look how you want. So there's a lot of people who've done all that work for you. Um, Jekyll Themes is a really good website for that. Uh, and so you can just search through all of the various themes for various purposes. Um, and they have some instructions, so I selected a couple just to show you. Uh, and they, you can go and demo them. Um, they, some of them come with like really good instructions for how you would set it up. Um, and so you can say, like, oh, this looks nice. I want my website to look like that. Um, and you can make it so. Uh, yeah. And then the other last thing is there's a lot more you can do so I just threw in some links if you want if you had your own um, URL or like host name um, or domain that you wanted to point towards the site you can do that um, if you want to have a secure site so you want to serve it over SSL there's some other issues with that um, and and I, I was wondering if anyone else had any more questions <laughs> Did I just like blow through that? <laughs> okay, well, thank you. <laughs> thank you.